Hi guys, my name's Jen. Welcome to I Create Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sublimate mugs. This was super, super simple to do. I have my gloves on because I just created this one and it's very hot. I also created this one. It says a Montalo Theater. You can create anything you want with mugs. I will tell you everything, what you're going to need in this video tutorial. I'm using my new HTV Runt Press and I absolutely love it. I cannot say enough about it, so I'm going to get started, tell you everything you're going to need in this video and we're gonna have a lot of fun and you're gonna make a bunch of money making mugs so let's get started So I'm starting in design space. This first one is one that I'm going to be using. I own a small town theater and I sell these cups at my theater and they go really, really well. So I'm going to make some more of these, but then I want to show you some other ones. So I'm going to go to upload and then view all. I purchased some of these from design space. So I'm going to use this one here. So I'm going to add that to canvas and then I'm going to get rid of that and we're going to see what else I'm going to do this one too. So I'm going to add this to canvas add that one to canvas and then I'm going to go down here and click view and here they all are here you just have to resize these so depending on what size cup you have mine are actually um, 15 ounces so it's going to be a little bit different uh, for each cup that you're going to be using so I'm just going to grab one of these make it a little bit smaller and then grab another one make it a little smaller so we can see it and then this one. So I purchased these from Design Space. I get pretty much all of my SVGs from Design Space. I really love it there. So again, depending on what size mug you have, I have a 15 ounce. It's going to be different for every size mug that you have. Another thing that I've been noticing is, although it says on the side here, print then cut, uh, I tried this one before and it actually doesn't. So what it does, is it cuts out all the letters and the image itself and I don't know why it was doing that so I had to actually put a box around it so just in case I'm going to show you really quick how I did that but for this one I'm not sure it says the same thing print then cut then you see a little notice here it says low resolution so I'm going to try it anyway and see what it looks like and then I thought this one was really cool so we're going to do that one but I want to resize it to about the size of this so this one's 9.143 by 4.251. So I'm going to resize each one of these really quick. But then I want to put a box around this one that I can tell Cricut that I want to print this part out, but then cut the box around it. This one I know actually does it by itself, so I don't have to worry about this one. So I just have to resize it. So I'm just going to go for the size of this up here. So I'm going to copy this size here really quick, and I'm going to change it to this one down here. So I have it unlocked, and I'm just going to paste that there, and then take this one, copy that, and then paste that one down here. But I didn't push enter, so I forgot. Darn it, I forgot you have to push enter after each one. So I'm going to go back in here and push enter. So there, so these are the same exact size uh, that I want it to be. So these two are done, but I wanna show you with this one really quick, you have to be careful because like I said, even though it says print then cut, I've already tried this one and for whatever reason, it just cuts out everything and it doesn't even create a box behind it. So I'm gonna show you really quick how I did that. I had to do that for this one. As you can see, there is a box around it already. Um, so when you cut it out and, and you let Cricut know, hey, you got to cut it, it's not going to cut like all the letters out. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to actually go to shapes here and I'm going to grab a square and then I'm going to just drag the square to make it as large as my piece is. And don't worry, your image is still there. It's going to move the box and we're going to take this and move it forward. So you want to arrange, bring to front. So then now you'll see it's right here. So now I can actually go ahead and resize this box to fit around it. But I want it a little bit larger than the image itself. So if we move this, we will see. I want to make sure everything is getting on here. I'm looking down here at the bottom and I'm also looking at the top part there. So you just want to resize it so it's just a little bit larger than your image itself so the Cricut will know to cut this out 
and then when you print this. So I'll show you what it means when it's done printing, but I just wanna take this and make it just a hair larger and then get it around it. So once you have it where you want it, you select both of them and then you go to a, a line and then you just center it. So there, so now it's all centered. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just change the color of the square and you wanna make it uh, white. So we're gonna, I grabbed it over here on the layer section and I'm gonna go up to the color box and I'm gonna change it to white. The reason I changed it to white is because I don't want that to print and your printer is not gonna print white, so you will not see that. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select it all again and click flatten. That will make it cut out all as one piece now. So now we're gonna look here, it still tells us there's a little thing, so it says image poorly will print. We're gonna see how this prints out anyway. So the last thing I have to do with this is just change the size. And again, I'm gonna take the size of this one and change it to this. Again, please don't use my size. Uh, I have a 15 ounce mug, so if you're using 11 ounce or 9 ounce or whatever you might have, it's going to be different than mine. And when I like to do mine, I like mine to be way up at the top and the bottom so the whole cup gets full of the image. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and put it on this one really quick. Whoops, I pushed the wrong button. Let's do it one more time. I'm just pushing control C and control V. So there, so then I put it in, push enter. And then I'll go back here, control C, go over here, push control V. But for some reason, it still didn't catch this first one. So we're gonna do it one more time. Hopefully this is it guys, and control V. And there we go. So here they are all the same size as you can see. So you can see the kind of the, how it, this one's going in front of this one. It's because that white box is over it. It's the same thing with this one. I have a white box over that one as well. This one I'm just going to use for another time. I'm going to delete that one and I'm just going to use these ones and kind of show you how they turn out. So I have them all to size, how I want them to be sized up. So then I'm just going to go to make it. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to show you the next step at my heat press. I have the new HTV Ront uh, tumbler press. I really, really love it. Been using it for a while now. So I'm here, I'm in material size. I'm going to click eight and a half by 11. I don't know why it automatically goes to the larger size, but I always change it. The other thing you're going to want to do is just mirror your image. Anytime you're using heat press, you always want to mirror your images. So I'm just going to go ahead and mirror those. Then I'm going to go ahead and push continue because I like how it is. Then I'm going to go to send to printer. And everything that I'm going to be using, I will leave in the description box below. I actually have two printers. I have this print colored printer here, and then I have an Epson EcoTank 2800 that I changed into be a subbing uh, printer. It's the same printers as the colored one, except for I use subbing ink when I first started it rather than regular ink. Very easy to do. You don't need an actual sublimation printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna click, uh, get rid of the add bleed and I'm gonna print it, and I'm gonna do it for each one of these. So I'm gonna go back here. Once that tells me it's done, I'm gonna go to this next one. I like to print them all at once and just get it over with. So I'm gonna click on that, change that, take off the bleed, print, and then I'm gonna do the last one, and then I'll show you what setting I use for the Cricut machine. So just one more here really quick. Just makes it easier for me if I do them all at once. And then it'll tell me, set your material. So I use this heavy cardstock material, the 100 pounds. If you don't have that on your favorites, you just go to browse all materials and you type in cardstock. So that's what I use and it works great for me. Now all I have to do is put it on a mat, send it through the Cricut machine, and then I will meet you guys at my heat press next. All right, so here is my heat press. I'm using the new HTV Ront mug press, and I absolutely love this. I'm gonna see if I can show you this really quick. So I have it set at 390 degrees for 240 seconds. You have to be very careful because the inside of this is very hot. So you can put your hands here and you won't get burnt because you can feel the heat there. So here is one image that I was using. This is for my theater. This is for the Montello Theater. It is backwards. Obviously, it's mirrored, so you can't read it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. Couple of things with your mug. So you want a sublimation mug. I'm gonna show you really quick what mine look like. So I get them like this, they come in a bag. You just take it out of the bag. Very, very important that you clean it first with some alcohol. So you wanna just take 
some alcohol, a little um, cotton pad or something, go ahead and clean it, is which I did with these. Then the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your heat tape. And this is going to sound silly, but the more tape you use, the better it is. Please believe me, because I've ruined a couple of these cups already because I did not make a nice, perfect edge on here. So as you can see, I went nuts on the whole thing. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure how this one is going to turn out. There is a little bit of a gap right here. I don't know if that shows up, but I cannot get that out of there for the life of me. I cannot get it out. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like, and I'm going to leave it that way. I'm going to keep it for my personal use. This one went on a lot better, but I taped everywhere the whole thing. Um, one suggestion is maybe I did my image a little bit too big, so I'm going to go back on the next image and make it a little bit uh, shorter up here. I'm just trying to get the most out of it. I see cups that are have a whole big space right here. I don't like that. And then they have a big gap at the top. I've never liked that, so I think I made this a little bit too big, but we're going to see together what it looks like. I have a pair of gloves here, so when I need to pull it out, I can do that. But the thing with this is you can put two of these mugs in here. You want to put it in like this. So I'm going to show you really quick. So I'm going to take both of my mugs, and I'm going to put them in towards each other. So I'm going to start with this side, and just carefully put this in here. Just watch your fingers that you don't burn it on the side. And then I'm going to take my other one, and put that in this side. And I'm going to put them so they're touching each other, and I want the handles up straight because when it goes and you push it, it will squeeze them together. So I'm making sure that I have enough room on both sides that it's not sticking out. And then all you have to do with this, because this is the HTV Rant heat press, just like my other heat press that's over there, is it's just a push of a button. So I set it at 390 for 240 seconds. It sounds like a lot, but when you're subbing, you want very high temperature for a long time. All I have to do is push this little R here, and it's automatically gonna close it and do the pressure for me. There's nothing that I have to do on there. So again, you wanna get a subbing mug, you need some heat tape, just like this, and then your image, and I will leave all the supplies down below in the description. Um, I use the A-sub uh, paper. I have a printer that I changed into a subbing printer. Basically all you do is you buy a printer. Instead of putting the ink in that it comes with, you buy the subbing ink and you put that in instead. But I will leave it all in the description down below. Make sure you clean them really well, let them dry, and go nuts with your tape. Like, believe me, I didn't, and I had ghosting on quite a few of them because it wasn't tight enough. Like I said, I'm being honest with this other one. We're going to see together what this one looks like because it did have a gap in it. But I want to show you guys. I hate those other people who are fake and like, oh, this is perfect and this did wonderful. No, I'm always honest with you. If I make a mistake, I'm going to show you. If I make a mistake, I'm going to tell you. So you guys are going to learn with me. I've only used this a couple of times. I did have some ghosting because of that issue. But this machine is awesome. I have two actually, I have actually two other uh, tumbler heat presses and... Um, this is by far the easiest. You put the temperature, the time, you push the button, and that's it, and it goes. So I'm going to let this count down. It's got 154 seconds left. I'm not going to waste your guys' time. I will come back right before it finishes. All right, so I just missed it, but it did actually open up by itself, so we're going to check. I have my pretty gloves on. I'm going to take this out carefully and set it down for a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to peel it and show you guys what it looks like. And I was working on another one really quick. I just wanted to show you with the taping. Let me take these gloves off again. Um, I cleaned this really well, and then I just started taping. So what I did is I took the edge here, I folded it over, put the tape on, and then you have the gap here, and then I tried to estimate the gap in between here to get the center. And then I just really tightly pulled this one, put tape on it. So the next step is what I'm going to do is take the top and just go around the whole top and then the same thing with the bottom. And it is a lot bigger down here, so I think my design was just a little bit too long on here. So I'm gonna go back and change that. But I wanted to show you guys what this one looks like. So I'm gonna put my gloves back on and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I have no patience, I have to see what it looks like right away. So we're gonna see together. So this is the Montello Theater one. Like I said, I own a small town movie theater with my family. And I make extra income when I sell the mugs there. So we're going to see what this looks like together. OK, 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Peeling the sides. It's still really warm, so I'm being careful. So that one turned out absolutely beautiful. No ghosting, no nothing on here. It looks wonderful. If I can get all the tape off. Oh, there we go. So here's what it looks like. Here's the other side. So again, I do sell these. They sell really well at my theater. If you're interested, check it out. Um, but this turned out really awesome. This other one, however, which I was a little bit worried about because, like I said, it had a little extra kind of bubble on the bottom. So we're going to take a look and see. Okay, it's not too bad. So this design itself actually looked like it had a little ghost scene. So I'm going to show you guys together with me what it looks like. So it's okay. The bottom has a little ghosting, like I said, was probably going to happen because my image was a little bit too long. But you know what? It's really not bad because of the image, the way it looks. That's not bad. So there's a little bit of ghosting right there. Ooh, this is very hot. Be careful. And then a little bit of ghosting there. But other than that, this turned out really well. So maybe when you're doing your images, I would suggest making it just a little bit smaller than what I said and always kind of check to see what size yours is because this is a 15 ounce mug. They have all different sizes, but I chose a 15 ounce because I think it's nicer when you have a little bit of a bigger one. But now, besides vinyl, this is much better because you can put this in the dishwasher and you can wash it by hand, you can put it in the microwave, as long as your cup says microwave safe. This one is microwave safe, so is dishwasher and microwave safe and anybody can use it. With vinyl, you could never throw it in the dishwasher. Obviously the vinyl will come off. So this will never ever come off no matter how many times you wash it. So pretty cool. I'm gonna finish up this one. Um, I think when I do the design again, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller at the top part on each end, the top and the bottom, but I like how it fills up the whole thing. As you can see, I tried to get all the way to the bottom. So I like that a lot better. So again, HTV Ron's heat press. I absolutely love it. Just a subbing mug and some images of your own. You can buy them off of Etsy. You can get them from Design Space. You can make your own. Like let's say if you wanted to make one with your kids' faces on it or your grandkids or whatever you want, you can also do it that way. Very, very simple. So I hope you guys like this video tutorial. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribers of mine already as I'm going to have a bunch more videos coming up and leave any comments or questions down below. I am still learning with this, so if you know about subbing, please let us all know, but I'm having fun. I'm gonna keep going, make a whole bunch more of these, but thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day.